actually quite a, an accident to read the Union forces were again marching through town enjoying the hospitality of the locals when Confederates who were converging in the same town uh, stumbled onto them. Uh, the battle was not planned by either General Stewart or by General Kilpatrick. Uh, they ended up uh, having a pretty savage fight on this, uh, particularly along Frederick Street and a couple side alleys all the way through uh, town to the north side of town near the railroad tracks. So there was bitter fighting going on on the early stage of the battle as uh, the Confederates swept into town. Uh, Union troops uh, that were already well up into the Abbottstown region had to turn around, come back galloping as fast as they could back down to Hanover to join the battle. So it just kept growing as the morning went on. I mean, the sound of the Battle of Hanover could be heard here in York County, uh, throughout the county, in fact. Uh, there are reports of the, of the sounds being heard as far north as Dillsburg again. Uh, Jim Orley himself was actually withdrawing towards Gettysburg that day after uh, you know, burning the Wrightsville Bridge uh, or fighting for the Wrightsville Bridge on June 28th. Uh, and he has men as far north as Davidsburg, Jim Orley himself. Here's the Battle of Hanover. Uh, and surprisingly, and unfortunate for the Confederate cause, but fortunate for the Indian cause, I guess, uh, generally never investigates what the noise was to the south, even though a pitched battle is being fought in Hanover in this place where you know, nobody should be. Uh, so you know, that's why a lot of folks not only blame Stewart for not being at Gettysburg on time, they blame Jubal Early for not investigating and linking up with Stewart when he clearly heard the battle going on. The rebels are coming, the rebels are coming. Well, they never showed up, they never showed up. So it was one of these of crying wolf when Jeb Stewart's cavalry division finally did show up from Rockville, Maryland. No, 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 you've been telling us that since 1861. And all of a sudden, right down the middle of Han uh, Hanover, our main street there, come Jeb Stewart's cav Confederate cavalry. So for almost a day, Hanover was occupied by a foreign nation's army, the Confederate States of America. So we have that. But that's the shortcut that Jeb Stewart was looking to uh, drag the 125 supply wagons that he had captured in Rockville, Maryland, to get it to Lee's um, amassing forces around Gettysburg. Hanover is supposed to be a shortcut for that, but when he met with another fellow who has a very historical name, George Armstrong Custer, he was forced, uh, Jeb was forced out of it, and he had to go almost all the way around to Chambersburg and then down to, to Gettysburg.
So that delay put him in Gettysburg on day two, late on day two of the three-day battle. And just think if he would got on those supplies that were in that wagon, um, the outcome at Gettysburg could have been questionable. The unexpected arrival of Kilpatrick's column was a pleasant surprise to the residents of Hanover, who warmly greeted the Union troopers with food and drink. Most of Kilpatrick's men remounted and passed through town, heading northward through the nearby Pigeon Hills towards Abbottstown. He left behind a small rear guard force to picket the roads south and west of Hanover. In the meantime, Stuart had left his billet at Shriver's Corner, Maryland, and was proceeding northward across the Mason, Dixon Line into Pennsylvania. Hearing that Federal Cavalry had been spotted near his intended destination, Littlestown, Pennsylvania, he instead turned towards Hanover in adjacent York County. His progress was slowed considerably by a cumbersome train of over 125 heavily laden supply wagons that he had captured near Rockville, Maryland. In addition, he had skirmished with Delaware Cavalry on June 29th at Westminster, Maryland, further delaying him. Shortly before 10 a.m. on June 30th, the rear guard of the 18th Pennsylvania Cavalry encountered Confederate cadets about three miles, five kilometers, southwest of Hanover at Gitz Mill. In the ensuing exchange of small arms fire, a Confederate cavalryman died and several were wounded. Shortly afterwards, 25 men from Company G of the 18th Pennsylvania were captured by the 13th Virginia from John R. Chambliss's brigade, the vanguard of Stuart's oncoming cavalry. Now, in discussing this Battle of Hanover, we got to start out first with this guy and got to give him the importance he deserves. Jeb Stewart was the most significant, the most important uh, cavalry commander in the entire Civil War. That means he rides on a horseback, he swoops into battle, he guards the activities of the Confederate Army, but this Confederate leader was the best cavalryman on either side of the war. And Lee trusted him like crazy. Here's a picture of the two of the guys here together. But Lee trusted this guy like crazy especially in giving him battle intel and telling him where to attack. Jeb Stewart would always say, he'd always scout the enemy and say, this is where they're weak. This is where you need to hit them. And then Lee looked like a genius because every single time he trusted Jeb Stewart and he struck that exact area. He used that intel, used that advice to make fantastic battle plans. And it worked almost every single time. But Jeb Stewart was always there for Robert E. Lee. But as we go into Gettysburg here, Jeb Stewart's missing, and Lee has no idea where he is. Now, back when Jeb Stewart is, he was stuck in York County. Let's find out how and why. So on June 30th of 1863, Jeb Stewart is told, just like all the Confederates, all the Southerners, concentrate at Gettysburg. Get to Gettysburg as fast as you possibly can. And he was close, and I'll go back, I'll go back to our map. He's around Hanover, and Hanover's only about like, 15 miles away from Gettysburg. And so he is extremely close and he might just have like a half day's ride to get there. So he should be able to pull it off very easily. Only problem, Union cavalry, 
was right in front of him, right in his path. And so, well, Jeb Stewart thought, fastest way for me to get there is to blast straight through them. Now, he's bold, he's confident, a little bit overconfident. So he decides to smash straight through the Union Cavalry, thinking that he could pull off an easy victory, get his name in the paper, steal some wagons, have some fun, win a battle. And, uh, well, it didn't happen to work out that way. 